In this video, I'm going to be shooting dandelions. I've gone and picked a few of these, and I'm going to be using creative coloured lighting to make the most out of this really interesting little subject. So I'm going to get started, and I'll see you in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome to another video where today we're shooting dandelions. Uh, it is that time of year where dandelions start to pop up everywhere, so I've been out and grabbed a few pristine ones and brought them indoors so that we can do a little bit of experimentation with the coloured lights of the Adapt Looks studio. Now, I've already made my first mistake in uh, blowing one of them for you guys. I thought it would make a cool uh, video intro, but now there's dandelion clocks all over my house. They're uh, floating around in the air. The cats are chasing after them. Uh, don't blow them, uh, no matter how tempting it is. Uh, try and keep them intact. They're very delicate, so we need to uh, be very careful. And that's going to be my first step, is very delicately setting up a dandelion uh, on my coffee table for us to shoot. I've got a lovely, fully intact dandelion here, uh, which I'm going to place into a crocodile clip to hold it in place so that I can then move my camera around and place some lighting behind it as well. Now the trouble with dandelions is that they die pretty quickly, uh, they tend to um, wilt over, their, their seeds will start to drop out, and also their stems are hollow. So I don't want to damage this, uh, this dandelion and make it die any sooner than necessary, so I'm going to be uh, using my crocodile clip with a couple of little bits of straw attached to the end of them. So I can then place my dandelion quite safely in between my crocodile clips and those sharp blades aren't going to dig in and uh, cut through the stem of my dandelion. Now the clamp that I'm using is actually for soldering, uh, that's why it's got this little magnifying glass on the front of it, but it does pretty well for holding small subjects like this, and especially flowers. Now that I have my dandelion sat quite securely in uh, my soldering clamp, it's time to start thinking about how to add a little bit of colour into these images. Now I've got a couple of ways of doing this, uh, one of which you'll probably have seen before if you've watched some other uh, videos on this channel, and that's using my lighting. I'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment, but for now I want to use an alternative method, and that's by using a coloured backdrop. More specifically, these uh, coloured backdrop gradient cards, which we send out in all of our packs. So you, uh, if you've got an Adapt Look Studio, you can grab some of these as well. And then you can just quite simply uh, place them behind your subject to get a really nice colorful backdrop. Now you'll probably have to light these up a little bit as well as your subject, but it's a really good start for adding some really nice colored shades into the backgrounds of your images. What I'm going to do with this is just place it in the other crocodile clamp that I've got on uh, on my soldering clamp here, and I've still got some straw uh, on the end of those as well so it doesn't damage the card. But you can see there that we can now shoot straight past our dandelion and onto our background. I think this is going to make for a really interesting start for getting a little bit of colour in the background of our images. To cast some initial light on our backdrop and on our dandelion, I've grabbed a couple of white lighting arms to begin with. I've plugged them into the Adapt Look Studio control pod, which you can see here, and because they're flexible, it's really easy to bring one of them round onto our um, colourful backdrop here, and then another one round onto the front of our dandelion to give that a little bit of light as well. Once I did that and got a really close-up look on my dandelion, you can actually see that there's tiny little insects hanging out inside the uh, inside the clocks. Uh, you can see them just sort of moving around a little bit, these little sort of green fly aphid things, um, which are really interesting to shoot. I'm going to flip over to um, a close-up lens, get a couple of shots of those, and then I'm going to leave them alone and get back to just shooting uh, my dandelion. Thank you. 
These little guys are really, really cool. I'm pretty happy to have found them in my subject here, um, but uh, they're not what I was shooting today. So if you want to see a little bit more about the setup that I'm using here with a reverse lens and some extension tubes, I'll link another video up here where I talk a little bit more about that, uh, using them to shoot a different subject. For now, I'm going to uh, get back to shooting my dandelions a little bit further out because as you can see, we are very, very close here and this is a very unstable setup. As I swap my lenses back over so we can get uh, back further out for our dandelions, um, we can get back to uh, what we were talking about before I got distracted. Um, we were talking about getting colour in the background of your images. Now uh, we've used one method for doing that in our backdrops, but we can also use coloured light from our coloured lighting arms and also from our colour filters to put some nice shades of uh, different colours down behind our dandelion. Before I do that though, I want to uh, change how my dandelion looks a little bit. What I'm finding here is that we're struggling to see past uh, the first few clocks and into the structure of the dandelion. So what I'm going to do is just pull a few of these uh, dandelion clocks off the front of my dandelion so that we can see into the middle. I know I said I was going back to the 100mm lens, uh, but since I've uh, meddled with their flower, all of these little aphids have made a beeline down the stem. They're all now huddled up underneath uh, where the bottom of the flower sits. Um, I'm getting a really good little shot of a whole pile of them, all just uh, trying to escape the light and the warmth and my meddling fingers. Um, I think it's really interesting that this uh, particular flower has got all of these little interesting bugs hanging around in it, um, but you might not have that, so let's get back to shooting the flower itself. With a little window into uh, my dandelion cleared out, uh, I think I pulled a couple of aphids there as well, but I'll put them back outside so they can go and uh, find a new dandelion to, uh, to get some sap out of. Um, now that we can see into our dandelion, I'm going to get really close in here and see if we can't um, emphasize the structure of uh, these, these clocks coming out of our centerpiece of the flower there and uh, get some really interesting shots of those lines and uh, the textures on the inside of the flower. Now, although our background cards have, um, they've served as well so far, just getting a little bit of color into the background, I did say that I had a second option for you there. What I'm going to do is actually use some color filters. Now, the color filters just snap onto the ends of the lighting arms. So if I snap one onto here and just move this into uh, very close background of um, my dandelion, you can actually see that in the background of the shot. What that's going to do is actually give us an illuminated background, which although um, not necessarily better than a gradient card, a background card, um, it's actually going to uh, give us a different sort of effect with light coming from the background of the image, seemingly from inside the dandelion itself. And these are really easy to change out, so I can change that orange very, very quickly for, say, a blue and get a much cooler type of image. We've got all sorts of different colours to go with as well, so let's try a pink on there and see how that looks. That's pretty nice as well. And you can move these around to uh, exactly where you need them to be. Let's just quickly try purple, which I think will be a really nice rich colour. Now, of course, we've still got that uh, main light on the front of our dandelion. You can diffuse that as well if you prefer. So let's try that by popping a diffuser on a front lighting arm. Now, we might need to compensate for uh, the exposure a little bit. But you can see that gives us a really interesting effect with colours on the background. 
Normally, right now, I'd be saying uh, take your time, experiment, try different things, uh, but with dandelions, they really don't last very long. So uh, you need to uh, work quite quickly, make sure that you're getting the shots that you want before they start to uh, uh, dry out and, and wilt and start to die, because uh, that means the clocks will be uh, easily knocked and fall out really easily, and your, uh, your stems will start to droop over. I've been shooting for a few hours now. Uh, it's quite warm in this room, um, and my dandelion has started to die. There is only one thing left that I want to try out, and that's using a little spray bottle of water to add a few water drops to the ends of dandelion clocks. By using a little spray bottle like this one, uh, you can actually get some really nice little drops of water on the ends of your clocks. Do make sure that it's a very fine spray. I'm not sure if you can quite see that, but uh, this is almost a mist. Uh, if you're putting large drops of water onto the ends of your dandelion clocks, it's going to add a lot of weight and your dandelion will start to droop. It's even drooping more just from adding uh, a little bit of water. There's a reason that dandelions and dandelion clocks are a very popular subject because they do give you these really nice final images and especially if you're using a lot of colour you can get some really pleasing results. I've had a lot of fun shooting these things today, it's been a little bit frustrating as they've fallen apart and slowly died, um, I've got everything wet with my spray bottle and I wasn't expecting to find little aphid friends inside my dandelion but it's all been part of the experience of starting uh, to shoot a new subject and finding what you can do with it. Uh, I'd like to know what you guys think to today's shoot, so make sure to leave me a comment down below, like the video if you've enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe for more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration in the future. For now though guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.